Anna Atkins, who was alive between 1799 and 1871, is often described as an amateur photographer and botanist, as well as the creator of the first photo book. This was called Photographs of British Algae, created in 1843. It is a book of three volumes, consisting of 398 plates and 14 pages of text, and entirely made from cyanotypes. Atkins learned about cyanotypes, alongside her father John Children, directly from John Herschel, who accidentally created the technique of cyanotype in 1842, the year before Atkins was creating her own. There are approximately 13 copies of this book in existence, alongside later work such as Cyanotypes of British and Foreign Ferns from 1853, Cyanotypes of British and Foreign Flowering Plants and Ferns in 1854, alongside personal albums and novels. In this video essay, we will explore Atkins' relationship to science and scientific institutions and the role of that in the reception of her work. As well as this, we will also explore the role of Atkins cyanotypes in the mediation of plant specimens. We will also look at the role of plant blindness in Atkins cyanotypes and how her methods allowed for a new role of plants in their own archiving. As part of my exploration, I visited the Victoria and Albert Museum's Prints and Drawings study room to see some of Atkins' original cyanotypes as well as other botanical illustrations from the past and present, which you will be seeing throughout this video. Atkins initially created her algae cyanotypes to illustrate the Manual of British Algae, a book written in 1841 by William Harvey. This book comprised of a list of algae with short descriptions and contained no illustration of the algae that it talks about. Due to growing sophistication and technique, illustrated plates were sometimes becoming so expensive to add that they were forgotten entirely and it is very possible that Atkins saw the easily reproducible method of cyanotype to be a solution to this. Furthermore, this was not Atkins' first time illustrating a scientific book. Earlier, she had worked alongside her father to provide 256 hand-drawn illustrations for Jean-Baptiste Lamarck's 1833 work genera of shells, of which multiple were used. In a typically Victorian way, her father acted as a medium for her work between the private and public spheres. Participating in scientific circles, children shared his daughter's intellectual pursuits, allowing Atkins to participate in photographic and scientific communities through him, such as the likes of Talbot and Herschel. Despite this, and her membership to the Botanical Society in London in 1839, her work was generally confined to the outsides of science, as interest in collection of plants such as algae and ferns would generally seem to be a hobby for women to do. In creating illustrations of plants in such a way, Atkins found a new technique of demonstrating a plant's form and detail, almost removing herself as an artist from the focus. Although Atkins was not removed completely, as she selected the specimens and arranged them on the page, she certainly aimed to present the work in such a way that the plant was speaking for itself. She used a camera-less technique that focused on form and light instead of colour, beauty and diagram detail using a colour palette surely suitable for the aquatic plants that she used. As she wrote in the introduction to her first book, the difficulty of making accurate drawings of objects so minute as many of the algae and conferva has induced me to avail myself of Sir John Herschel's beautiful process of cyanotype to obtain impressions of the plants themselves, which I have much pleasure in offering to my botanical friends. Remediating the plants in such a way gave them the opportunity to have a new voice and showed plants in a way in which they had never been shown before. Used as reference photos, they bring to light new features of plants that previous botanic illustrators may not have deemed important or noteworthy, a sign of their own plant blindness, perhaps. Used as art, however, they let the plants show their beauty in a way they haven't been able to do so before, in a relationship between human, plant and light that is unseen in other previous or even modern forms of botanic illustration. Plant blindness, a term coined in 1998 by Wondersee and Schussler, is defined as the inability to see or notice the plants in one's own environment. Atkins' work helps us to combat this notion of plant blindness in a multitude of different ways. Atkins worked essentially as an archivist, forming relationships with the plants that she recorded and assisting them to archive themselves in their own forms. Her work benefits greatly from the work and archival labours of non-human agents, as they undertake an authorial role in her work. Atkins questions the human-centred principles at the heart of traditional archival practices, meanwhile presenting plants in a way that they have never been viewed before, 
She sought to make nature portable and knowable, and at that she surely achieved. Atkins' work stands out greatly from the work of other botanic illustrators of the past and continues to influence them today. This can be seen in the work of Barbara and Zafer Baran, photographers who use similar but modern cameraless techniques, that of digital scanning and inject printing, to make similarly revealing botanical portraits, which were then used on postage stamps to commemorate the Royal Horticultural Society's bicentenary. As we continue to talk about and photograph plants today, Atkins should remind us what more there is to the plant that we are recording and the other ways in which it can speak. As we battle with plant blindness ourselves, we are now challenged to look at the other ways that we can form a relationship with plants through their mediation and how this can teach us more about not only plants, but the world as we know it today.